Greetings and welcome everyone to The Last Tinker, City of Colors. Now, before we get started, I would like to mention that to the developers, I forgive you for misspelling colors. There's no you in there, but I'll forgive you for now. If there's a sequel though, like, you know, the not so last Tinker, City of Colors, make sure to put a you in there, okay? If you don't, then, ooh, you best watch out, boy. Now, before we get started, I would just like to take a quick look at the video options because this game is actually, you know, has quite a lot of options and it's very well done and I would like to congratulate the developers on actually doing a very good job with that. This sort of stuff should be, you know, rewarded with, you know, praise and that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm giving them praise. So good job developers for a pretty good amount of video options. Um, I've got it set right now to 29 FPS instead of 59 FPS just because I'm recording and you know, it's weird when you're recording, there's a little bit of stutter, so just keeping it at 30 for now. There's also a lot of um, volume sliders, which is great. I love me some volume sliders because it is just so annoying trying to hear someone and then it's like, hold on, come again? What are you saying? Can't understand you. Oh, uh, and you'd like try and, um, like say if you try and like l turn up the volume and it turns out there's just one volume slider, that's the worst. It's just the worst thing in the world. Well, not really, but it's definitely up there. Um, anyway, let's talk about the actual game. This is The Last Tinker, City of Colors. It's sort of a 3D platformer like um, the, the PS2 generation of 3D platformers. It reminds me quite a bit of games like uh, Sly Cooper and um, Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank. You'll see what I mean when, uh, when we move on throughout the level. Uh, anyway, so let's just talk to uh, this little guy. Bolzo and his gang. It looks like they're in bad shape. Do you think we should go and see what's wrong with them? They may be slimeballs, but still, let's see if we can get them, get to them, okay? Alright, so we need to head all the way to Bolzo and his gang. Now, once, in order to uh, move over little obstacles, we need to press R2 and then move forward, and that will allow this little character of ours to uh, move forward. He, he sort of does it on his own. It's, it's sort of it's very Assassin's Creedy in that sense, you know, it's very automated, so there's not that much that you need to do in terms of, like, platforming. Like, there's no pixel-perfect jumps here. Most of the time, it's, it is rather automated in that sense, so it's not, not too bad there. So, it is definitely a game aimed for children, you know, people who are new to 3D environments. Uh, this is also pretty cool. This is what I mean by, like, Ratchet and Clank. You got, like, grinding and stuff like this. Uh, there are certain sections on here where you will need to jump off by pressing the R1 button and that works pretty well. They give you a nice little uh, heads up every time you need to jump ahead, so it's very nice. Uh, this is a checkpoint right here, this little thing. So if we were to die, we would respawn from there. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, these are our little platforms that we need to jump across. So away we go, very nice. And I had to time it pretty close there. Oh, also these are the these are treasure brushes or paint gold paint brushes. I don't know. Basically, these are just sort of your collectibles throughout the level. There's one in um, no, well, there's not one. There's like plenty of them in each level, and your goal. Oh shit, I messed up. And your goal is to collect them all. Uh, I don't know what you get for collecting them all, but hey, that's something that you can do. So if you want to collect them all, you go right ahead, mate. Ow, that was very rude. Okay, need to watch out for that. Dude, I'm nearly dead. Okay, oh! No! <laughs> oh no! That was so close. I managed to actually still continue like hopping through there while I was uh, nearly dead. I am playing on hard mode, so uh, I do take quite a bit of damage. I imagine if you were to play on normal or easy, you'd take very little damage. Okay, there we are. Is there a treasure brush still in my inventory? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So I don't need to go pick it up again. That's good. Now let's just wait here. Let's see. Let's try and avoid the big bad dude over there. Oh god, shit, that thing started going down as I started moving. Oh, this is way too <laughs> Oh man, I, I like to live on the edge apparently. Um, this game is really good looking, like really good looking. It's a Unity engine game, so I thought, you know, it looked like, you know, your average Unity game, you know, looked pretty rubbish. But no, they they definitely have mastered their engine because this game looks gorgeous. It is Seriously, this game has one of the best aesthetics that like I've ever seen. Well, not ever seen, but it's definitely up there. No way, I don't really care. Did you see what happened to my friends? We came here to ask the Red Spirit for help. He doesn't talk to us red folks anymore, but I figured we had to try, you know? 
It doesn't matter. Now I can't leave my guys like this. Go up to the shrine if you can make it. But if the Red Spirit helps you, just don't forget about us, okay? Alright. Now, uh, the gang characters, they sort of talk like... Um, I guess they sort of talk in gibberish, sort of like uh, The Legend of Zelda or uh, Banjo-Kazooie, you know, stuff like that. They don't actually speak in real wor words, so uh, it's it's pretty interesting how they've done that. I, I sort of prefer gibberish with just words than real voice acting. Well, I don't prefer it, but I can understand the appeal of it because, you know, you don't really have to worry that much about, you know, bad delivery if you're just doing gibberish. And it's also much cheaper. I went around in a goddamn circle, damn it. Yeah, so it's I, I quite enjoy that. It's a very nice little sort of thing that they've done there. It also reminds me of, like, games of old, and, you know, that's also pretty good. Okay, can't get... Oh, I can go through this way. I thought I wouldn't be able to. Thanks for the checkpoint. Right, now this game is pretty light on the difficulty. It's not that hard of a game. Most of the time your challenge, it comes from uh, just timing stuff and that's really it. So if you can time stuff pretty well then you'll have no real trouble. There is a combat system in this game but it's very, very simple. It basically plays itself. It's a lot like Arkham Asylum's combat, or the Arkham style of combat, except much, much more forgiving. And there's really only like one move and that's punch. Oh, hello. There you are. Sorry. I mean, there you are. I'm glad you followed my symbols like I said. Very glad. Sorry, it always bursts out of me. Although I live in this relaxing temple, I'm currently the opposite of well adjusted. Okay. Well, can you tell us what's going on or why you led us here? I can, sorry. Well, first of all, the bleakness is destroying the city. The bleakness? You mean that white stuff? Boy, you're smart. Sorry, but yes, it's the most destructive force in Tinkerworld. If we don't stop it, Color Town will be destroyed. And how are we supposed to stop it with a big mop? You really don't know? Your friend there with the fancy hair. He's a tinker. Huh? That's new. I guess you don't even know what that means, eh, Kuru? Explain it later. There's more important stuff to, to contend with right now. Look at the state of my dome, and look at my veranda. One of those bleak spawners has made itself comfortable in there. You're a tinker, that makes you capable of wielding my power. You can use it to fight the bleakness. That's why I called you here, sorry. Nah, screw it. Let's punch some color into their faces. Now, I really do enjoy those cutscenes. Those cutscenes are very well animated. They've got a ni lot of nice, you know, little cinematography and stuff like that. It, w it works really well. It's surprising to see such high quality, you know, um, it's surprising to see such, you know, just overall quality in an indie game. Like, most of the time you expect them to, you know, use pixel graphics and stuff like this, but, you know, this is really good. This is really good. I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised with this game. I can definitely see myself playing this for quite some time. Shoot the power of the strength with B. Alright, alright. So, okay, so now that we're in combat, I guess I'll show you how you perform combat. Basically, you just press B, and you punch stuff, and that allows you to just, well, just wail on them. You can also evade by pressing R1. It's not that useful, but it's there if you need to use it. Maybe later on in the game it will become more mandatory, but for right now, I just sort of uh, punch back and forth. Like, if someone starts attacking me, I just, you know, travel halfway across the world and beat them up instead. It's not really that difficult in terms of combat. It's really not that difficult overall. Like I said, it is intended for people who are just getting into sort of 3D games, I guess. So, I can definitely see why it's not that difficult. It's intended to be played by maybe children, you know, children, you know, who are attracted by, like, bright colours, which is what this game is mostly consisted of, you know, bright colours. So, I definitely think that's the reasoning why the game's, you know, not that tricky. And, you know, it's perfectly okay. Okay, now, time for more grinding. I really like this stuff. It is really automated, but it feels so cool just grinding around the whole area. Love it. Love it a bit. Alright, I guess we gotta beat these guys up then. Oh god, that just destroyed him. That it? Oh god, gotta beat this up, I guess. I, oh, okay, I see what we gotta do. We're, he's gonna send multiple waves of enemies, then he's gonna open himself up, and then I'm gonna have to beat him up. Okay, alright, so I just gotta survive. Alright, I can do that. 
It's no problem. These little things don't stand a chance against little uh, Kuru here. I forgot his name. I was going to call him Tinker, but he's not. He's, well, he is a Tinker, but his name isn't Tinker. Oh, there we are. There seems to be a sort of like um, special maneuver he does there. Like he does like a, a yeah, he does that sort of flip there, and he just pounds the ground. I don't really know how to make that happen. It seems just like by repeatedly pressing the circle button, you eventually do it. But uh, it would be nice if you could maybe have some combos or something like that, sort of like the Arkham games. But like I said, it is intended for people who are new to 3D games, and I guess that would be too complicated. Amazing, all that color came out of that thing. Oh, of course it did. Sorry, but yes. All that drained color has to go somewhere. When Kuru here defeated that creature, the color it was holding was set free. We saw a similar thing when the way to the market district was blocked. What? I didn't just say so. But I was just... There's no time to lose. Take that jump pad. It should take us close to the exit. Move. He didn't apologize for yelling at me. What a jerk. All right, let's hop out of here with rainbow power. Taste the rainbow, Kuru. Taste the rainbow. All right. Um, oh, yeah, we need to talk to this guy. This guy's a real jerk. Whatever you did, that slime sure didn't like it. You just f forgot about one thing. My buddies are still frozen. Do something about it. Okay, I guess we gotta punch him. There we are. Just punch the punch the color out of, or punch the white out of them, I guess. Not bad, ape face. A little beating didn't hurt them either. Now before we can get out of here, you must deal with a bunch of those annoying shooters. They're the reason we got trapped in the first place. I say you pay them a visit and throw in a few punches while you're there. Who am I getting rid of? These dudes? Okay, they don't look that tough. Although they're the things that can I get through, please? Thank you. Such so rude. All right. Now I haven't quite figured out the oh down here. Okay, I haven't quite figured out the best way to uh, move really quickly. Oh shit! Wow, that really hurt me. So I guess I maybe should be uh, dodging more. Thankfully, there's no lives or anything like that. And when you die, you don't actually have to like re redefeat all the enemies. So. Yeah, it's not, it's pretty forgiving. This game, like I said, is intended for newbies to the whole gaming thing, and I, it does it really well because it is very forgiving. It isn't that difficult. It's very automated. It's, you know, it's not very complex. It's mostly just a single button game, really. Well, two buttons. Uh, it's like R2 and Circle. That's basically the two primary buttons of the entire game. And it's simplistic, yes, and it, you will have to sort of get, um, it is sort of something that, you know, hold on, where am I going? Oh, back this way. Right, yeah, it is sort of an acquired taste because, you know, not most people enjoy these super simplistic games. But, you know, if you're into, if you're just getting into games or if you're not that great at games, then I can definitely recommend this because, I mean, I'm playing on hard and, you know, it's pretty easy. So I also think there's like a higher difficulty than hard as well. So if you want to have a challenge, you probably can get a challenge by playing on difficulty even higher than hard. You really did, Ape Face. I guess there's something I have to do now. Listen up, I'll only say this once. Thanks. I owe you one. Okay, guys, let's bust out of here and head for the market district. Did that really just happen? All right, let's leave the dome. Okay, so that sort of seems to be like how the game is going to be structured. There's uh, multiple districts, I guess. There's like the red district, the green district, and the blue district. And I guess we're just going to have to go through... Um, <clears throat> sorry. I guess we're just going to have to go through all the districts and then beat them all. Uh, and then basically save the world of color, or save the world with color, and then, um, then go beat up the white big boss. Because uh, we basically unleash this hellhole on the city... Uh, if you play the game, you'll understand what I mean by that. But anyway, uh, we just got a checkpoint here right now. Save that person. And um, actually, is there a person back here who needs saving? What are these gray things? Uh, they're just gray things, right. Well, anyway, um, yeah, well, thank you for sticking around, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video of The Last Tinker, City of Colors, and GG.